Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I am going to be gathering together 10 of my favorite uh, inspirational quotations that relate to art and uh, creativity in general. And as I uh, talk about these different quotations, I'm going to be working on a sort of copy, a study, of this drawing by uh, Degas. The, uh, it is a portrait that Degas uh, did of his friend uh, Edmond Duranti, a novelist in France. And so yeah, let's just go ahead and jump into this. But first, I'm going to pull out this number one quotation from Jack London, also a novelist. Don't loaf and invite inspiration. Light out after it with a club. And if you don't get it, you will nonetheless get something that looks remarkably like it. Uh, love that quotation, and especially the idea of, you know, not sitting around uh, waiting for inspiration. I think there's kind of a misconception there of uh, uh, artists having to be, having to have that sort of lightning bolt of inspiration. Uh, before they get uh, started. You see actually quite a lot of quotations from working artists that are along the lines of, you know, just just start working, you know. Don't, uh, don't sit around like he included this word loaf, you know, don't loaf around, don't be lazy. Um, if you start um, trying to find inspiration, trying to create something, you will uh, get there eventually, but if you're just watching TV all day or whatever, um, that's that's no way to <laughs> find inspiration. I think there is something to that. If you at least start trying to do something, you are more likely to get inspiration, or as Jack London put it, <laughs> something that looks remarkably like it. I love that he had that sort of, you know, compromise uh, view of uh, what inspiration can be. Let's move on now to a quote from Vincent van Gogh. If you hear a voice within you saying, you are not a painter, then by all means paint, boy, and that voice will be silenced, but only by working. Now this, I found, this quotation very often is reduced in length, and that last part about working uh, gets dropped out. Um, but it's from a letter that uh, van Gogh, or van Gogh, I think I should say, uh, wrote, and uh, the full quotation is uh, as I uh, read it to you just now, uh, and it has, it's sort of a combination of inspirational but also encouraging you to uh, keep working. Uh, this idea of uh, this voice within you that is saying you are not a painter, or you know, it could even be just like you are not good, you're not good enough. This voice that all of us sometimes hear inside of us um, he says, just go ahead and start painting, and that voice will be silenced. And I think there's a reason why that quote, this quote is so popular, is I think most of us, at one time or another, have doubts about whether we qualify as an artist. Uh, we have those voices inside us that say, you're not good enough to be, you know, who do you think you are calling yourself an artist? On bad days, we all uh, are you know, in that unhealthy mental zone of just really berating ourselves and, and doubting that we qualify. And uh, I love that idea that if you just start doing it, that voice will be silenced. And I think there is something to that. Um, let's move on now to the next one, number three. And this is from Edgar Degas, who is uh, the uh, artist that I am studying and learning from today. Painting is easy when you don't know how, but very difficult when you do. Uh, I love that quotation, sort of uh, seemingly paradoxical, um, but I certainly identify with that. I think when you're first starting out and you're just sort of um, having fun with it, it feels easy. And then later on, when you've started to study a little bit more, and you, I think because of that, you start holding yourself to a higher standard, um, it becomes more difficult. It seems more difficult as you go, uh, rather than easier as you might expect. Um, but I do think there is that sort of aspect of when you started out, you weren't holding yourself to such a high standard, and so it felt easy. Uh, some of you may say, that's not true. I've, it's always, you know, as a beginner, I find it incredibly hard. Uh, so, yeah, you know, these quotations are going to be of varying, varying degrees of, um, you know, uh, 
are going to have varying degrees of sympathy, I think, among artists out there. But I, those of you who have had that experience, I think you'll know what Degas was talking about. Um, that idea of uh, it seeming easy. Some, t you know, it's almost like there's such a thing as beginner's luck. You know, sometimes, uh, like my first uh, comic book, Akiko, my first published uh, comic book, it did sort of seem easy. I was just making it up as I went, and I had a lot of success with that. And I thought, boy, everything I do from now on, I'll have the same success. And uh, that's not necessarily the way it goes. And I think there is this aspect of beginner's luck. And so if you, if you look back and feel like, boy, it actually seems harder now than it used to be, you are not alone. Many of us have had that experience. Let's move on now to this one from Andy Warhol. Don't think about making art. Just get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, whether they love it or hate it. While they are deciding, make even more art. I love that last part, and I think that's really what makes this quotation so great. Um, let everyone else decide whether it's good or not. Stop obsessing over um, the judgment of your art, whether it's judgment from you or from other people. Just keep making stuff, you know, and I think there would be a lot of um, a feeling of liberation if you just keep making art and stop trying to judge it all the time. Um, anyway, that's an interesting one, especially when you think in terms of um, Warhol and what an innovative artist was. And you, you might have thought that he, there, you know, that he would have had this very calculating approach to art, but not from that quotation. It sounds like he just jumped in and kept making stuff and let's try this and let's try that and uh, it's a great zone to get into artistically sort of switch off your brain and just start working with your hands you know or, or let it all flow from your from your heart and from your soul and stop trying to judge everything and, and rate everything on a scale of one to ten or whatever um, this pencil is starting to get a little dull, but I, what I did, you, know, you might have noticed, is I started with this detailed face, facial work um, early on while the, there was still a certain sharpness to the tip. And then sure enough, the lines uh, here as you get further away from the face get looser. So, And of course I have uh, <laughs> got a spare uh, Prismacolor over here that's sharpened if I need to. Let's move on now to number five. From Francois Voltaire, originality is nothing but judicious imitation. The most original writers borrowed from one another. Uh, so this is a nice one for those who are a little bit obsessed, maybe a little too obsessed with being uh, completely original and saying, boy, you know, it's all been done. How can I do something that's completely original and new? Uh, well, here we have Voltaire, you know, probably more than a hundred years ago, uh, saying, no, no one is completely original. Originality itself is, as he called it, judicious imitation. I like that phrase. Um, and so, uh, yeah, again, I think we can get uh, paralyzed by the desire for or originality. Um, whereas the truth is, you know, nothing is completely original. You're always, I for sure have been influenced by lots of people and I'm building I've borrowed one idea from The Incredibles, or I've borrowed another idea uh, from Star Wars, or who knows what other, other things that have influenced me over the years. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, as long as you're transforming it enough and making it your own. You don't uh, want to be copying word for word or line for line someone else's uh, work, of course, that's plagiarism. But, yeah, you can... You can be inspired. You can borrow a little bit of one of their ideas and transform it into something that makes it your own. Okay, I'm already past the halfway point of my quotations. At some point I'm going to uh, have to kick it into time-lapse to finish off this drawing. But, let's move on to number six from Salvador Dali. Have no fear of perfection, you'll never reach it. <laughs> That's a nice one, and it, it's slightly dark, isn't it? <laughs> Don't be afraid of perfection, because you never will be perfect. Um, 
uh, that's sort of like so much of uh, uh, Dali, uh, there is a humor there, a sort of a dark humor to that quote that I like. Um, but yeah, certainly um, being obsessed with perfection is probably even worse than being obsessed with um, originality. You know, who's going to achieve perfection? Uh, we're all human beings. It's always going to be a little bit flawed. And um, so, yeah, best to give up on that goal, maybe, of perfection. Just, you know, do the best that you can do. And who knows, maybe you will stumble onto a sort of perfection. Um, you'll never know until you try. Uh, I don't think anything I've ever done, I could look back and say, oh, that was perfect in every way. Uh, far from it. But... Again, I think that part of it is the uh, so many of these quotations are related to not letting any of these concerns paralyze you. Um, just get in there and start making stuff. And that was kind of, you know, the, when it came time to select different um, quotations for this video, I certainly wanted them to be as inspirational as possible and to... Uh, you know, reassure people out there who are maybe struggling and in need of inspiration. All right, let's move on now to number seven. From Yo-Yo Ma, the great uh, master cellist. Passion is one great force that unleashes creativity because if you're passionate about something, then you're more willing to take risks. I thought that was interesting, this idea that, uh, that your passion for doing something allows you uh, to take more chances. And I don't know if I had necessarily ever put those two things together until I saw this quote from uh, Yo-Yo Ma. Uh, but certainly passion, I think, is a big part about getting good at anything. If you're passionate about drawing, you will draw all day, again and again, and you will gradually get better. If you're not naturally passionate about something, then the, the hours of practice are not fun for you. You know, it feels like a chore. And I do think you will be held back by a lack of uh, passion in the sense of you're just not enjoying this. You know, maybe uh, it's a drastic thing to say, but there may be some other pursuit that is more naturally interesting for you. Um, I think really when I think of my history with drawing, uh, I just look back on years and years of, of loving it and drawing all the time um, because uh, it was fun, you know. And I think to me that's what that word passion uh, conveys in my mind, that idea of it's fun, you're, you love it. Um, you're slightly obsessed with it. And that's how you end up putting in all those hours. Uh, so yeah, a little quotation there about the importance of being passionate about your art or whatever creative thing that you're uh, chasing after. Now I'm going to go ahead and kick it into time lapse to add, um, uh, you know, to sort of finish off the rest of this drawing. And then I will be back to do the last, uh, what is it, two or three different quotations that I have to complete uh, this video. All right, well, we're far enough along with the um, drawing that I think I can go on to my final uh, three quotations. I'm pulling out, though, a uh, white Prismacolor rather than a black Prismacolor. Normally, you all know I love my beloved white gouache, but looking at the original illustration, I think these highlights were done with some kind of white chalk, probably. Um, or Conti, I guess they call it. It doesn't look to me as if it was done with the white gouache. So let's go ahead then and move on to number eight. This one from the playwright uh, Edward Albee. Creativity is magic. Don't examine it too closely. That's an interesting one. Uh, I think people have different instincts when it comes to um, art and the degree to which they want it to be a sort of a magical, instinctive thing versus something where you get into the nuts and bolts of it and talk about it as if it's like carpentry or something, you know, and, and there, you know, I, I always say that there's two types of artists. 
the um, demystifiers and the mystifiers. Uh, I probably belong more to the demystifying camp, which is to say I don't want it to be too much of like, oh, the, these things cannot even be analyzed. It's all a mystery, and, and uh, uh, let's not even try to dissect the art. My instinct is actually to um, do, I love talking about it, you know what I mean? I love sort of breaking it down and, and talking about what things work and what don't work, but nonetheless I was struck by that quote, creativity is magic, don't examine it too closely. Sometimes I think you can get too, um, you know, you have to sort of, uh, uh, as I said in an earlier one, sort of switch off your brain sometimes and just let it be instinctive. Um, and I myself am oh, just now in a lot of ways learning to do that. Uh, with my writing, uh, I've started to include things that I don't fully um, understand why I've added this into the story. It's it's something, sort of a gut instinct kind of a thing. Uh, if you ask me to justify or to tell you what is that supposed to mean, there are certain things now in my stories where I have to say, well, I don't know. I don't know exactly what that means. It just felt right. You know what I mean? So I wanted to get uh, at least one type of quotation that represented that point of view. And now we can move on to number nine. This one from a guy who I have to admit I didn't really know who this guy was, Charles Horton Cooley, uh, a sociologist it turns out. Uh, an artist cannot fail. It is a success to be one. Um, I wanted to sort of wind things down with uh, these truly inspirational um, quotations that, that uh, will sort of make you feel positive about yourself as an artist. Uh, as I said, a lot of us have that sort of voice in our head that is criticizing us or berating us, causing us to doubt ourselves. And uh, maybe we should just believe what old Charles Horton Cooley said. An artist cannot fail. It is a success to be one. Just being an artist is itself a success. And I also wanted to include that because I think we all, certainly I, uh, worry about success sometimes and throughout my whole career I'm like am I successful enough you know and our society in America I think probably throughout the world right now is a little bit obsessed with success and um, you know maybe the definition of success can be uh, changed <laughs> so that simply being an artist that in and of itself is a success uh, and indeed don't base your definition of success completely on other people and their, you know, their attitudes towards you or things that they've said about your work. That seems like a recipe for misery, really. Uh, if other people and their criticisms are the, the be-all, end-all of, of your idea of whether you're a success or not. And I think we are coming down to the very last one here. This from the great writer, Neil Gaiman, who I've never met face to face. Hopefully I will get to the chance someday. But uh, he says this, The one thing that you have that no one else has is you, your voice, your mind, your story, your vision. So write and draw and build and play and dance and live only as you can. Uh, I love that quotation, and uh, it is, uh, it's nice to sort of end on this note of individuality. No one else will tell this story the same way that you do. You don't even have to try to be original. Um, you will inevitably be original. You will tell the story in your own way. You will make the drawing in your own way. You will, if you write a song, no one else would have written that song as you did. Um, originality is a part and parcel of, of the creative process. And, uh, and I think really what he's underscoring there is don't try to imitate the other people. Don't try to look at what's popular right now and try to do that. No, do your thing. Uh, do the thing that you do and let that uh, guide you from beginning to end. And I believe that brings us to the end of this video. Hang on a second. I'm going to go ahead and grab my books so that I can say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting them. Like The Drawing Lesson, my graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. I'm working on a sequel, and it's going to be called The Comic Book Lesson. 
I'll be talking more about that in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, the Two Pencil Method, my book that teaches you how to make drawings like this with just two pencils. And Mastering Manga, the whole series, Mastering Manga 1, 2, and 3, my book about how to draw in a manga style. But I think it is time for me to lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.